On 20th October 2011, the deposed leader of Libya, Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, was captured and killed during a battle of Siate. Gaddafi was found hiding in a culvert after his convoy was attacked by a NATO aircraft. <laughs> the graphic video of Gaddafi being tortured and killed went viral on social media. The news of his death also took the world by storm. We can definitively say that the Gaddafi regime has come to an end. Although several countries and world leaders often criticize Gaddafi calling him a dictator, several Ugandans have often looked at Gaddafi differently. Although at that time I did not have direct link with Muammar Gaddafi, I advised his envoy, who can see me here, to turn Tripoli into a studying ground. With H. E. Jacob Zuma, we are to work out a solution for the aircraft and cruise missiles that some people use. Today is the 10 year anniversary of the death of Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, but the question still lingers on people's lips whether democracy, rule of law, and peace have been achieved in Libya. Veteran journalist and Pan Africanist Bad Kakosa has this to say on the matter. To me, I thought that they have the situation became worse after the death of, of, of Gaddafi, which is really evident. And um, it will take a lot of years for Libya to, to stabilize again. The people wanted Gaddafi out of the, of the way, achieved what they wanted to achieve, and that's it. He was a good leader. In his leadership, he wanted to unite Africa, as United States of Africa. In Uganda, Kanawama Gaddafi is remembered for his philanthropy, especially on the side of the Islam faith. He is credited for having constructed Gaddafi National Mosque at Old Kampala and many other things. You described him with so many degradatory term terminologies. A killer, a what? A terrorist and other t names, but for us, Gaddafi was a dignified human being. We talk about Gaddafi, we talk, we talk about Africa, a pan Africanist, a patriot, someone who cherished African unity. And in, in our case, Uganda, here we got a lot of development programs from him. On the side of politics, one may wonder what lessons can Africans learn from the attacks. As long as the West is still interested in Africa, and as long as people, there is lack of pan Africanism and lack of patriotism, where you think this is my country, I love it. And as long as there is the element of money, that people need money, we are going to have problems. We are not going to solve the problem. What we have is that we rarely, African leaders rarely look at life after their leadership, and yet that is eminent. There is actually an understanding that any position that you go to uh, becomes yours before you can sit into that position. But the moment you get there, uh, the chances start actually getting loosened up because many others are looking for such positions. Any post, take it at any, at any not only the, the African leadership, but any point of leadership. So I think uh, we've got to respect uh, what we call uh, the, the constitutions which are within these countries. Since Gaddafi's demise, Libya has fractured along regional and ideological lines with an assortment of mafia-like militias and, and their foreign backers vying to control the oil-rich country. Many Libyans hope that the upcoming elections will help solve the crisis. The idea that you want to bring Gaddafi's son, is, I don't think it will solve the problem, because it is going to perpetuate the problem. First of all, Gaddafi's son will come with vengeance and will say, no, I want to deal with those who deal with my father. So I think that, I don't think that is, that is, that is correct. Colonel Mama Gaddafi, who decided to fight to the day he refused to step down to leave his country or run to exile, was reported to have been killed by several gunshots to the head during the crossfire between the National Transition Council troops with the aid of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization and Gaddafi's loyalists. Simon Chris Makanga, CTV, PM Edition.